Take one, Mark. Come when you're set. Set. Set and action. What did you do? What did you do? Enough. I said enough. Gotcha. All right, guys. Wardrobe is clear. Makeup is clear. Move camera for a sec. Quiet, please. Lock it up. Help! Claire, can you do that help again? Clearly, you're not familiar with the politics of the Ewok. Really? They have a mayor. Sorry, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, more of a like you you turn and then it, it's not like a jump. You turn and get up to go help her. Okay. And action. James and I wrote both the scripts in a month. Okay. So actually, since I last saw you, uh, no. Actually, correction, you did not write it in a month. We did five days per script. Well, five on the first one, seven on the second. Really, it took longer for Bethany? Yeah, it did. Was shorter. No, it was longer. Oh. But so what we did? Might as well stand here. No, 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 I just no, want to please. please. You're gonna you're gonna jump in anyways, and I don't wanna I don't wanna have to smack you on camera. Uh, so what happened was I had seen a film that I was not impressed with, and it inspired me to do anything. Uh, it was the idea like, don't let perfect be the enemy of good. So I uh, called up James, I'm like, I'm pulling the trigger on this, I've got a bunch of investors who put money into other films before. My thought was, let's jam it out and get it done. So James had a distributor friend of his. Approaching a distributor in advance is something that really helps, uh, especially for this film. What I did is I had my movie Pernicious, which is coming out in theaters soon, um, that all the distributors saw um, when it was playing festivals and they had made bids on it. And the distributors that we didn't end up selling the film to, I approached and said, hey, um, you know, they, they put in an offer for it and I said, hey, if I made a film in the same genre, would you buy it? And they said yes, and so they pre-bought the film. And so these films were pre-sold before they were made. Yeah. It was very easy to finance them based off of they were already sold before they were made. So it's like, hey, one, once the film is delivered, you get X amount of dollars from the distributor. It's very easy to say, hey, can you finance this because I'm literally basically borrowing money from you for like a little bit of time and then it comes in. He said specifically what he was looking for. As opposed to making up a movie that you're like, this is my passion project, it was, uh, here's what the distributor wants. They basically said as long as um, I'm writing and directing, uh, which on one, and then I swung it as a two film deal that I would write both with Zach, Zach would direct one and I would direct one. And then they said that it had to be um, like ghost house type stuff. So like, you know, genre films with a supernatural element. That's, that's what's big right now for, for genre. So it was haunted house uh, film with a ghost girl. And inside that niche, we could do whatever we wanted. So we came up with about 12 different concepts, pitched them to him, he chose which ones he liked, and then we wrote them. And we literally, wrote them over Christmas. My girlfriend is very, very kind and understanding. So over Christmas, we were locked in our offices, sleeping there, writing 17 hours a day, jamming it out. And we got, uh, we wrote Restoration in five days for the first draft. And then Bethany, we wrote in seven days. And then we both went our separate ways to do our polishes on each. So I directed Restoration, he was gonna direct Bethany. Uh, so I polished Restoration, he polished Bethany. So once we had that, uh, we already had the distribution. I talked to my investors, and at this budget, we had a good MG, minimum guarantee. So it wasn't that much of a risk financially. Um, it was a real thing to move forward with, so we did. And it's, you know, it's micro-budget films. It's hard. Uh, it's really hard. <laughs> But we have fantastic crews and wonderful people that we're working with, and then we have begged for every favor we could get. So we then crewed up, cast up, locked it down, and started shooting. And we did them back to back. So we did, we're doing six day weeks. Our restoration was 14 shooting days, six day weeks, uh, then three days down, and then started Bethany. First 14 shooting days. On this short of a schedule, because we have 14 days to shoot the movie, and it's a 95-page script, you're shooting six to 10 pages a day. 
which is pretty intense. When I was in Thailand, I had a 28 day shooting schedule, so I was shooting like three to four pages a day. But if you look like, you know, if, if you write out a bunch of stuff like in here, I have certain things of like, this is how the character feels. Like she pulls back in saying something childlike, anger and hate behind her voice, but it isn't loud, it's more subdued. Stuff like that, it, it gives you more of a moment that you're able to just go in on how you already intended for the scene to go you work with the actors during the blocking and some of some of the actors I'm blessed like to have people like Zach and Tom Green and Shannon Doherty and and uh, Stephanie Estes and everybody who's been involved uh, they've all put in time before the movie so I was able to talk with them about their characters and really go through all of this so their scripts match note wise with my scripts so they already kind of know what I was going for originally what was layered in each character and like each character's backstory past the page so we developed that together and then um, it's kind of comes into clockwork because with all the stuff like focus or sound from a plane it, you don't have as much time to really work with the actors so you have to go in and and, and you know work with them prior and, and really get them to where you want them before and so I played it both ways which way do you want it here um I think this side. This side. Okay. But also at the, at the same time, since uh, since your character is supposed to be the least, it doesn't matter. It doesn't quite. Matter. All right. I just wanted to make <laughs> yeah. sure. Yeah. For I for you to... for you specifically, just because your character. Is I could be looking up here. Yeah. <laughs> and hold on, quiet. And action. What did you do? What did you do? Enough. Yeah, yeah, we had a rain bar. Right, yeah. and so how is that? That's not problematic, right? It's just easy, just turn it on and it's... It was actually a little problematic. It took us a while to get set up and uh, it was hiding like the stands for it to get it going. Um, but uh, it's it's cool. And and the funny thing is, is it... it <laughs> that's one of those things where like I fight for random aesthetic things where like, you know, uh, there was no reason that it had to be there other than like I thought it would look cool if rain was in the background for one shot. So we spent money on having this rain bar because I thought it was important for how I wanted to introduce uh, Tom's character because I wanted him to be coming out of the rain. One of the things that I've really played with the most on this film that I'm really excited about is uh, is my scene to scene transitions. Like every single time in the movie there's there's almost every scene we go into a scene to scene transition. So it's like, you know, I'll have a character pick up a, a coffee mug and then they'll go to sip it and we'll cut into a close up of them sipping it and when they pull it away from their mouth we pull back and we're in a different scene. So it's just them sipping the same coffee mug but they're on a different day in a different scene. So finding different moments to have something that's similar art wise so you're on that, focused on it and then you're somewhere else. I, I like to hide uh, how we got from one place to another. Um, and I think it, it definitely helps with the fluidity of the movie and also with the fluidity of the character because a lot of this movie plays as some cerebral thing within the character's psyche almost as if it's uh, the, the lead actress's psyche. So it's almost as if like the entire movie is a quilt woven together. So I don't want stuff to, people to ever know when something ended and when something begins. And we go in and out of flashbacks a lot. So one of the cool things about that is uh, instead of having the flashbacks be separate scenes, I'll have the character turn and look and we, we dolly over there and we have a dramatic lighting shift and it plays as if it's a little play in front of her and then they leave the room. And so there's these really cool transitions that, uh, that play out and like the world changes, lights come on, art moves. And uh, I, I got a lot of that from watching the movie Lone Star, if you've seen that. So we've, I've been kind of copying that a little. <laughs> But, you know, uh, doing my own version of it, but uh, watching it, I was like, I have to do that kind of thing. That was awesome. So these are certain, like, I wanted practical lights throughout the house, so I took pictures of that. I had paintings that had, so hold on, pictures that have the mood. We'll have, like, uh, shots from other movies. So these have, like, definitely the same kind of lighting that I wanted for the aesthetic look of the film. And so you go through and you look at how this is lit, and you see, like, all that stuff. And then now I'll pull up a shot from my actual movie and you'll see how we matched it. So, and this is what we ended up with. This is a still from, from Monitor, um, uncolor corrected. So it's all about having, um, having that, that dialogue and that conversation. 
And you know, for me, it's really important to have everybody on the same page so they all understand the vision. So I always, you know, that's just my cinematography file. I also have, you know, an art file, an effects file, a hair file, a makeup file, a wardrobe file, and all that stuff. And everybody, all the department heads put their stuff into it, and I put my stuff into it, and we combine and, and work it out. And it looks like Marcus is pulling me now. One of my favorite things about doing a, a scene like this, especially in like this location that we have over here, um, is I originally had like 14 shots shot listed for this scene, a bunch of stuff prepped, and then when we were doing the walkthrough, I saw this, this part of the hospital and this location, and it looked really awesome. And I knew it was gonna look good on camera and, and the lights, but since it's such a, a tight space, uh, I chose this location, which totally made my shot list go completely out the door, because now I can't do any of the things I originally planned because it's such a tight space and so many people. So now we're kind of like winging it a little. So it's uh, it's kind of fun, because it keeps you on your toes and it's, uh, it's very different because, you know, I'm very prepared all the time, and this is the first, one of the first times where I kind of just have to make make things up as I go, which is, uh, we'll see how it goes. We're going to flip, get their line when they're walking away where he's like, move your ass, and pushes him into the room, from that way, over from them to these guys, okay, uh, during that whole exchange. Then we're going to get a shot of them from here while he's walking Walk through. Away. I'm going to get an insert shot that has to match for a transition of um, Kevin's arm going onto this door. And then after that, um, I'm just gonna let DFAS do the DFAS special. Five shots and then we're out. Okay. You make the movie a bunch of different times. You come up with a concept and write it. That's your first time making the movie. Then you shoot the movie. Then you edit the movie. Then you score the movie. So you're really making the movie four times, you know? And throughout the process, you the thing that you thought was gonna be awesome, that was okay. But that other thing that you didn't think was gonna be amazing was fantastic. So you have these happy accidents, especially when you're doing something with such a brief turnaround um, and no prep time that you're finding happy accidents. Actually, at this point, we've got an amazing crew who's done not only doing Bethany, but also did restoration. So the, uh, I think it's, it's smoothed itself out. Everybody's gotten along, figured out if they like each other, if they don't like each other, you know, walked away from the people they don't like, hung out with the people they do like. Uh, they're all professionals. It's not like someone has a major tantrum and sits down and pouts about it. Yes, we will. I promise you, but right now you're gonna get a little rest because I promise you that everything is gonna be so much clearer once you're resting. He was there. Mm -hmm. he, was with my he was He was there the entire time. The sister. You do have a sister. He was yes. Gonna... And we're gonna talk about your sister. He told him he knew her name. She was the apple queen. I know, I know. You have to call her. Okay. Cut! Cut! Alright, that's a cut.